Good morning. I'm Jeff Hall, the pastor of Valley United Methodist Church. I welcome you to our virtual worship service. If you would like a bulletin or other information about the church and our activities, you can go to bit.ly slash veilchurchinfo. Lots of links there to all sorts of things. Also, later on in the service, uh, we will be doing a baptismal renewal and remembering our baptism. So I invite you to maybe pause the video, um, go get a bowl of water and, and um, you know, with a cup or two of water, not a whole, doesn't need a whole lot, but, but just some to, so you can better participate in this. And now let us turn our hearts to worship.
Good morning. I'm Shira Goodfellow. Please join me in the call to worship. The congregational responses are in bold. The voice of God resounds upon the water. The Spirit of the Lord hovers over the stream. The Son of God is named Beloved, and all who worship shout out glory. Ascribe to the Lord majesty and strength. Let us worship God in holy splendor. Please join me in the prayer of confession. God loves us and calls us each by name, knowing we are eternally forgiven and infinitely loved. Let us boldly confess our sins before God. We are precious in your sight, yet we often forget that we are your beloved. We confess that our love is fickle and inconsistent. We follow selfish goals and deny that our way of life harms others and hurts your world. We are sorry and we want to change. Create in us a clean heart, strengthen our resolve, reconcile us one to another, and bless us with your peace. Amen. Beloved, God forgives your sins. Know that you are pardoned and be at peace to love the Lord and serve the world. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. The scripture reading this week is from the book of Luke, chapters 3, verses 15 through 17, and verses 21 through 22. The people were filled with expectation and everyone wondered whether John might be the Christ. John replied to them all, I baptize you with water, but the one who is more powerful than me is coming. I'm not worthy to loosen the strap of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The shovel he uses to sift the wheat from the husks is in his hands. He will clean out the threshing areas and bring the wheat into his barn, but he will burn the husks with a fire that can't be put out. When everyone was being baptized, Jesus was also baptized. While he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit came down on him in bodily form like a dove. And there was a voice from heaven, 
You are my son, whom I dearly love. In you, I find happiness. Did you read comic books as a kid? I did. You probably figured that. If you remember, kind of a kind of one of the, one of the basic things about a superhero, they have this power, this superpower that does really cool things, but they also have a secret identity, and they hide who they really are from the public. If you recall, Superman had to jump into a, a phone booth booth in order to you know, take off his clothes and, and and be in his his cape. When's the last time you saw a phone booth? Well, uh, modern superheroes in the movies um, have these these nano suits. You know, they push a button and the suit comes on over them. And 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 you know, the last the Spider Man movies, for instance, and Iron Man have have these things. That way, people don't know who they really are. As Christians, we have a superpower. We are the baptized people of God, but we should not ever have a secret identity. We need to tell the world what that means. Let's take a look. Will you pray with me? And now, O oh Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. In December, we celebrated Advent, a time of preparation and anticipation we lit the Advent wreath, one candle at a time, getting closer and closer to the arrival of the Christ child. And now, after Christmas, we have John the Baptizer. And in a way, it is Advent all over again. It is a time of preparation and anticipation. He is proclaiming the coming of the Messiah, calling people to prepare by turning from sin and turning to God. Many people heard that and responded. And they made a public proclamation of their desire to turn from sin. And, and so, so John baptized them. Now, baptism was not a new thing. It was common in the ancient Near East. It was a, it was a ritual of cleansing, though. People would, would, would go to be washed as a public sign of the renewal of their uncleanliness, of a washing of their sin. But it was a human act a human response to God. Jesus changed all that. In Jesus, baptism was not a human act, but a divine one. The Holy Spirit came down and touched him and marked him and forever changed what that means to Christians. It is no longer a human act in response to God. It is a holy sacrament that invites the Holy Spirit to mark us for God. A one-time act for God's grace does not go away. In the United Methodist Church, baptism is one of two sacraments, the other being Holy Communion. Sacraments are, are, that, are that, that the holy act, the divine in our lives. Sacraments must be performed by, by someone who's ordained in the church as an elder. Now, certainly we recognize there are cases where that does not always happen. There are exceptions to that rule, but, but, but that's, that's the desire. Christians have long recognized the need for emergency baptisms, if, if, especially if death is imminent and an ordained person is not available. If you've ever talked to someone who's, who's been in a neonatal unit, you'll, you, may, you may hear a story of, of an infant baptism when, when someone ordained was not present and they thought the baby was going to die. Baptism is quite simple. It, it, it really, it just requires three things. First, it requires faith, obviously. Now, this is, this, this is easy, easiest to be the, the, the faith of the person being baptized, but it is often the parents of that person or, or sponsors, someone who, who will promise to, to raise that child in the faith, to bring them into the household of God. And as we, we look at Scripture, we, we see the, the, the events, uh, especially in Acts chapter 16, where, where the entire household was, Lydia was baptized when she became a believer. 
And you remember the story of Paul, Paul and Silas in the Philippian jail where, where the, the, the earthquake happened and, and the, the door sprung open. The jailer thought he was, he, his prisoners had escaped. He was going to kill himself until Paul and Silas said, Paul and Silas said, wait, don't do that. And he became a believer and he and his entire household were baptized. His faith, Lydia's faith, enabled the baptism to happen. Second must be the presence of water. Now, again, in the Methodist church, we usually sprinkle. Not a lot of Methodist churches have baptist, baptistries that would allow for, for full immersion. And we baptize a lot of infants, and it's hard to, it's not a good idea to fully baptize an infant. We talked about that in my Baptism 101 class. Anyway. Although, in fact, I actually done both. Uh, again, usually we sprinkle uh, infants, but I've had some some, some uh, adults that, that want to be fully immersed. And that's that's beautiful imagery. I like that. We had a confirmation class that several of them needed to be baptized, and 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 they wanted to be baptized in the river. So we went down to the James River and put on a, a church party and a celebration and, and dunked them all. The next year, we, I, in the confirmation class, I, I mentioned that, and, 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 and a couple of those kids were like, uh, I'm not going in that water. <laughs> so we sprinkled. It was good. Lastly, we require the invocation of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity. It, it is an important part of our faith, those three persons in one. Without that, it's just a human act. So when someone tells me they want to join the church and, and, and they were baptized, you know, I say, well, where were you baptized? And if, you know, they tell me, oh, I was baptized in the Catholic church or the Baptist church, I, I know I know they met those requirements. Uh, I had one person come to me from the Seventh-day Adventist church. I was like, hmm, and I had to look. But sure enough, they, they, they baptized with faith and water and Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. On the other hand, the Mormons do not. So we do not consider Mormon baptism to be acceptable baptism in the Methodist church. More importantly, though, baptism is a one-time event. People will often say, I, you know, I don't remember my baptism. I was, you know, I was two weeks old. And that's probably true for a lot of us. It was true for me. But remembering our baptism is not remembering the act, but the effects of the act. Living into that baptism. It is more powerful than our human recollection of a long ago Sunday. Baptism has marked us with the Holy Spirit and brings us into the family of God. It's our superpower. We are superheroes. We are more than we first appear to be. We are greater because of that mark of the Holy Spirit on us. Wow. Wow. Think about that. Now, that is not something to put us higher than others, but in a place to help others. Because our desire is for them to be superheroes as well. Our work is to put the world right side up, to make the world as God intended it to be. To bring others into the family of God. That's a challenge. And over the next few weeks, we're going to take a deep dive into this. We're going to look and celebrate the work that we do as the baptized people of God. In particular, we're going to look at the way that this congregation at Vail, in this community, transforms the things, the people, the structures around us. We are putting on our superhero identity and going and doing the work that God has called us to do. That superpower is a calling from God. But it's not just for us by ourselves. We have the creator of the universe rooting for us, guiding us, encouraging us, empowering us. And we have the entire family of God, billions of saints who join us in the task. That's great work to do. And not something we should keep a secret. So let us go and live as the baptized people of God. Will you pray with me? Speak to us, O Lord, 
for we, your servants, are listening. Amen. to this time where we renew our baptismal covenant. We invite you to get that bowl of water that you were invited to do at the beginning of our worship service so that you may also remember your baptism with us today. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. And friends, now I ask you on behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin. I, I do. do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I, I do. do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's Holy Church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? I, I will. will. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you sent in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth, tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. 
Declare his work to the nations, his glory among all people. Pour out your Holy Spirit, and by this gift of water, call to our remembrance the grace declared to us in our baptism. For you have washed away our sins, and you clothe us in righteousness throughout our lives, that dying and rising with Christ, we may share in his final victory. All, All praise, praise to you, Eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. My friends, we invite you to dip your hands into the water. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. The Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us rejoice in the faithfulness of our covenant, God. We give thanks for all that God has already given us as members of the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We will faithfully participate in the ministries of the church through our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. May the God of all grace who has called us to eternal glory in Christ Establish you and strengthen you that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may live in grace and in peace. Amen. Amen. Friends, now is the time that we come to our worship in a time of prayer and reflection, remembering the goodness of God through baptism, through the community of how we are joined together, and also lifting up the prayers of the people around us who are in need of God's presence this day. We do this day lift up the people who have suffered from the wildfires in Colorado and all of the storms that have happened throughout the month of December. Sometimes it's hard to remember what it might be like for someone who has lost absolutely everything. And keeping that in mind as we join into this new year, remembering and reflecting on the ways that we can be community together and support one another in those times of chaos and disaster is an important thing for us to do. We also continue to lift up elections that are happening throughout our world that the people who are put into power and governance would be one to see the good of all people and work for our communities for justice and for peace and for equity. Today we lift up Pam at the death of her sister Connie. We continue to lift up those on our cancer list and you can see that full list if you contact our church office. As we prepare our hearts to pray this morning, our response when you hear me say, creating spirit, your response will be stir us with your power. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds for prayer as we sing together, open my eyes that I may see. Let us pray. Glorious God, as Jesus prayed at his baptism, your mothering spirit brooded over him, providing sustenance and strength. So settle over us today as we offer our prayers for the church and world, saying, Creating spirit, stir us with your power. We pray for your church. May your word spark our lives with truth and joy as we serve one another to the glory of your name. Creating spirit, stir us with your power. We pray for all leaders and people around the globe. May your justice provoke us to shape a peaceful world where all work for the common good. Creating spirit, stir us with your power. 
We pray for the well-being of your creation. May your goodness startle us to the horror of all exploitation and abuse. Creating Spirit, stir us with your power. We pray for all who suffer grief or sickness of any kind. May your tender presence abide with us and hasten our healing. Creating Spirit, stir us with your power. We pray for all who lack the essentials of life. May your righteousness raise us up to walk together with respect and dignity for all. Creating Spirit, stir us with your power. We pray for those who have died, that your steadfast love may shelter them in the peace of your eternal light. Creating Spirit, stir us with your power. O God, you have made us, formed us, and called us by name through our baptism, and you have redeemed us in Jesus Christ. Receive our prayers this day, for your living, giving, life-giving spirit is powerful to save. All these things we pray in the name of the Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who lives in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours are the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. future of the world inside 
I want to thank you for your uh, donations to the church, for your support that allows this ministry to continue and to do God's great work in this world. You can give through push pay. Um, that's a very secure thing. You can do one time or uh, recurring donations. Again, links at our Vail Church in, uh, bit.ly slash Vail Church Info. And now let's give God thanks for what we have been given. Heavenly Father, at his baptism, you acknowledge Jesus as your beloved son, and through him, you opened to us a way to become your children by grace. May these gifts that we return to you be a sign of our dedication to live as your faithful children, born in the waters of baptism by the power of the Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Before we go, just a couple of things. Um, we are starting our, our back to our routine after after Christmas. Uh, our Sunday night small group will meet at seven tonight. That was virtual only this week. We'll go back to in person probably in the future. But uh, again, if you want need that link, bit.ly slash Vail Church Info, or you can email the church, pastor at veilchurch.org, uh, myself, and uh, get that link. Our Wednesday morning small group is starting a study on grief. Uh, it's 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, again, in person and virtual. Our uh, women's groups on, on Saturday mornings is starting a, a new study as they work their way through the Bible. I think you will find that wonderful and challenging. 
lots of stuff happening, and I hope you can be a part of that. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who stood with sinners on the riverbank, uphold you. May the love of the Father, who calls us beloved children, bless you. And may the power of the Holy Spirit, who descended upon Jesus as a dove, give you peace. Amen. I'll never have the power to control the land or conquer half the world or claim the sun. I'll never be the kind to simply wave her hand and has a million people do the things I wish I'd done. Inside of me.